Continuing with our series, uh, we'll go through every single surah in order, inshallah. Today we are going through uh, Surah Tawbah or Surah, uh, surah Bara'a. And last time we talked about that Surah Al-Anfal. Surah Al-Anfal was revealed after the Battle of Badr, which was the very first battle. And according to many ulama, Surah Tawbah or Surah Bara'a was revealed after the last battle, which was the battle or the expedition of Tabuk. Uh, and this happened at the very end of the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Of course, I talked about last time that why is there not a Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim at the beginning of the surah? I shared with you about a quote of Uthman ibn Affan radiyallahu ta'ala an. But in addition to that, one person asked Ali radiyallahu ta'ala an the same question that why is there no Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim at the beginning of Surah Tawbah or Surah Bara'a? To which Ali radiyallahu anhu said that in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He expresses His anger upon the mushrikun and the munafiqun. And when we talk about Bismillah rahman rahim the idea of Bismillah is rahma, compassion, mercy, and the adhav of Allah and the compassion of Allah do not go hand in hand. And hence, therefore, at the beginning of the surah, we don't find Bismillah rahman rahim This surah in itself, brothers and sisters, is from beginning to end, talking about that how we as a Muslim community, because once again, this was one of the very last surahs to be revealed, Allah is informing us and telling us that what was the traits of the munafiqun, what were the traits of the Ahlul Kitab, what were the traits of the mushrikun uh, in Mecca, and more extensively Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the munafiqun and their characteristics. Why? So that we as a Muslim community, we make sure that in our own personal lives, in our communal lives, there's nothing that we are doing that is similar to the munafiqun. Now, in addition to that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he makes very strong warnings when it comes to the Muslim community. He tells us that if you give preference to eight things above three things, then that is when the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come. Allah says, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبَنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبَنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَاتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ لِقَتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِ فَتَرَبَّصُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِي Allah is telling us that if we want to succeed as a community too, we have to make sure that when it comes to Allah and His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is nothing in the world. There is absolutely nothing in this world. There is no relationship in this world. There is no money, no wealth that can come above Allah and His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the minute the Muslim Ummah puts their, the love of their parents, the love of their brothers, their love of their, of their um, relatives, the love of their wealth above Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then that is when we will see the wrath of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And this is not just an idea that Allah is sharing with us, but then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He shared with us stories in the same surah to help us understand the same concept. In the very next ayah, Allah talks about what? The battle of Hunayn, where the Muslims, they put their number. They thought that because they had the numbers, now they don't need to be focused on Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They thought that their numbers is going to give them the victory rather than Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are going to give them that victory. And that is why in the beginning of Hunayn, they suffered a major setback. It was then later on that some people had already fled the scene. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was able to regather, recoup everyone and again give them a very strong pep talk and then they were able to go and defeat the army and defeat their opposition. But the battle of Hunayn taught us a very important lesson that if we put our numbers, if we think that our numbers are so great that we don't need Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, battle of Hunayn is a very perfect example. Then we also learn 
in the same surah that when it comes to fear, when you have Allah on your side, you have nothing to worry about. When Rasulullah sallallahu and Abu Bakr radiallahu an, they're in the cave. إِلَّا تَنْصُرُوهُ فَقَدَ نَصَرَهُ اللَّهِ إِذْ أَخْرَجَهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا ثَانِي يَثْنَيْنِ إِذْ هُمَا فِي الْغَارِ إِذْ يَقُولُ لِصَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ لا تحزن إن الله معنا. Do not be afraid. Allah subhanahu wa taala He tells us the story about two people, the Prophet and Abu Bakr radiAllahu an in the cave, and one of them said, Abu Bakr radiAllahu an said to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that if they were to just look down, they would see us and we would be caught. But Allah subhanahu wa taala inspired Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and He informed Abu Bakr, لا تحزن. Inna Allah ma'ana. Brothers and sisters, when we have Allah on our side, we have to put our yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have no one to be afraid of. And if there's only one that we have to be afraid of, it is Allah Jalla wa'ala. And this is what we learn also once again in this same surah. In the same surah, going back to those eight, three, eight things, above three things, we learn in the battle of Tabuk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was a time where the Muslims were waiting to, you know, to harvest their crops. This was that one time of the year they used to make money. Not like you and I, we get a paycheck sometimes after two weeks or after a month. But this was only one season annually where they would make money. And during that same time, they were forced to put the love of Allah and the Prophet ﷺ above the love of their dunya. And so, the, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed them, you have to go for the battle of Tabuk. And no matter what, no matter how harsh these circumstances are, they were saying that it was extremely hot. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the heat conditions were severe. Allah is telling them, is reminding them, if you think this is severe, the fire of Jahannam in terms of its heat is even more intensified. This is nothing. This is the heat of this dunya compared to the akhirah. It is absolutely nothing. So then we also find that in the same expedition, there were three people who stayed behind. And because they stayed behind, not because that they have love for this dunya over the Prophet ﷺ, but because of procrastination, because of Tomorrow I will go, tomorrow I will go. As we find in the story of Ka'ab bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala an, that he said that I will go, I will go. And tomorrow eventually never came for him. And the time came that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came back to Medina. And think about it at that time, the, the, the munafiqun were going and they were lying to the Prophet sallallahu They thought they're getting away. They're lying to the Prophet sallallahu And they told Ka'ab, just lie to the Prophet. He does not know. Just lie and you'll get away with it. But see here once again a very valuable lesson that when it comes to Allah and His Prophet ﷺ, we cannot disobey them. We cannot go against their commands. We have to follow what they have told us to do. And not only that, but we cannot try to even deceive Allah and His Prophet ﷺ. Ka'ab bin Malik is saying, I have decided that I will not deceive the Prophet ﷺ. And that is why at the end of the surah, Allah said, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. O oh people, O oh believers, be with those who speak the truth. And not only that, but the story of Ka'ab bin Malik is very long. I don't want to go into the whole story, but there is one point in that story that I want to share with you, which is very important. In the story of Ka'ab bin Malik ta'ala try to understand and try to put yourselves in the shoes of Ka'ab bin Malik ta'ala The entire community is revolving around Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If the Prophet is happy with you, you're a happy man. If the Prophet is upset with you, there's no way you can even survive in that community. Imagine coming to the masjid and no one wants to talk to you. Imagine coming to the masjid and no one wants to see you. This was the case with Ka'ab bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala an. Why? Because Allah had ordered the Muslims to boycott these three people for an, for an extensive period, period of time. And during that time, Ka'ab bin Malik says, I would come inside the masjid and I would sit down and pray. And while I'm praying, I'm looking from the corner of my eye and I see Rasulullah sallallahu looking at me. 
But when I look towards Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Prophet would turn his face, turn his face away. He says that I would go to everyone else and I would try to communicate, but no one would communicate with me. Think about the situation of Ka'b bin Malik radiallahu an. He goes to his cousin and he begins to ask him that do you really believe? Do you really believe that I would betray? That I don't like Allah and His Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? And his cousin did not respond to the question. Why? Because they were given strict orders by the Prophet sallallahu Because the orders ultimately came from Allah jalla wa ala, that no one is to communicate with them. The entire world is collapsing upon them. And not only that, but Ka'ab bin Malik says that one day I was in the marketplace. Once again, put your sho- we put ourselves in the shoes of Ka'ab bin Malik. Imagine being betrayed by everyone. No one wants to talk to us. And if there's anyone who gives us any kind of hope, any kind of attention, as human beings, we would take that attention. Ka'ab bin Malik عنه, is given a letter by a, uh, another kingdom, by the king of another kingdom, telling Ka'ab bin Malik that your people, your prophet has left you. They don't want to talk to you. We have heard how you get treated in Medina. Come to us. We will give you izzah. Come to us, we will give you izzah. Just like today, subhanAllah, there are so many kuffar who are telling Muslims, come to us, we will give you the izzah. And at that time, Ka'ab bin Malik says, Wallahi, that this was a very difficult decision, but I saw a burning fire. I took that letter and I burnt it. And I, I completely got that idea out of my mind that I would leave Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this was a very difficult time. But the point from the story is that no matter what the situation was, no matter if everyone felt, if he felt like everyone was boycotting him, and it got to the point, brothers and sisters, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even told these three people that you are to stay away from your wife. Meaning, not, imagine not having your spouse, not having your children, not having your community members, and more importantly, not having Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you're going to the masjid every single day. But SubhanAllah, even within all these difficult circumstances, they never left Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they stuck with Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And SubhanAllah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala forgave Ka'ab bin Malik Allahu an at the very end of the story. So the point is, from all these stories, whether it's Tabuk, whether it's Hunayn, whether it's the story of Ka'ab bin Malik Allahu an and so forth, is that brothers and sisters, we should never ever, we never ever leave Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Never give preference to dunya above Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The minute we give preference to our relationships above Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wallahi, we are doomed. The minute we give preference to our wealth above Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are doomed. The minute we doubt Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, just like in the case of the cave, they never doubted. Rasulullah Sallam never doubted. The minute we doubt Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are doomed. So these are things that we learn from this story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expresses his anger when it comes to the Quraysh, when it comes to the Ahlul Kitab, when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the Munafiqun. And on the other hand, Allah is telling us, the Muslim community, that all Muslims be mindful about these kind of things, be cognizant, be cognizant about these kind of things. And if you want to succeed, Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu they come above everything. I ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to grant us the tawfiq to put Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu above all of our matters. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. Wa jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shahru Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an hudan lin-nasi wa bayinatim من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر 
يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون